A new supercomputer to be located in Tulsa will be able to predict future transportation needs and much more. When fully operational, it will be the only community supercomputer and one of the top 25 academic supercomputers in the U.S. Members of the Oklahoma Innovation Institute believe the computer will help generate jobs by giving researchers and entrepreneurs a tool to accomplish what has been impossible before. Famous American inventor Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Tenacity and patience are still key attributes that researchers like Dr. Raza Abdabant must employ as they work through countless trial and error experiments. Unless you build something, there's almost no way, no guarantee that what you think is going to be the solution is actually going to be the solution, right? Dr. Abdelbant works at OSU Tulsa's Helmrich Research Center, where he leads graduate students in creating and building new mechanical devices that interface with electronics. The goal is to make inventions that will enjoy commercial success. Dr. Abdelbant is trying to develop improved infrared technology where cameras can take pictures by detecting heat instead of light. The most expensive part of this process is actually building the device. So if you do a better job in designing them, you save a lot of time and cost. The computers in his lab may be tied up for long periods of time running experiments. Some of the computations that they do now may take 30 days on a high-end desktop computer. But with a supercomputer, it might take literally hours. OSU Tulsa President Dr. Howard Barnett says to improve research, the university is eagerly awaiting the arrival of a new community supercomputer that will be housed at City Hall. The computer is under construction in California, but this is what it will look like. Dr. Jeffrey Orzak is the new president of the University of Tulsa. The computer is the greatest instrument and tool today for research that exists. And so the fact that Oklahoma and, and Tulsa in particular will have one of the fastest in the country allows our researchers to, to uh, do things that they never could have dreamed of before. And so whether it's in medical science or in national security or in energy research, it is the, the most vital research tool that we can provide them. And so it will be, it will, it will be a true differentiator for the state of Oklahoma. Dr. Jerry Clancy is president of OU Tulsa. He sees the supercomputer as an invaluable tool to predict health needs 10 to 15 years from now. It may say, we're very vulnerable as far as diabetes, or we're very vulnerable as far as individuals needing transplantation. And you know, are we ramped up to be able to provide new kidney transplants and new liver transplants because the data says um, that's where we're heading. The Tulsa Area Universities, Tulsa Community College, and private companies and corporate research groups have formed a collaborative alliance called Tulsa Research Partners. Their goal is to use the supercomputer to turn research into high-impact jobs. There are going to be uh, uh, numerous companies formed as a result of this technology transfer out of this research. And so we're looking, uh, we're looking at over uh, a potential of 200 companies uh, being formed over, uh, over a, a period of time, seven, eight years. And we're also talking about major research grants. We're talking about a couple of hundred million of research grants flowing to Tulsa. Two young computer scientists, both graduates of the University of Tulsa, will manage the new supercomputer and connect researchers from different fields so they can work together. The supercomputer allows different types of modeling that allows a different type of fuel to be tested out on an aircraft engine um, virtually without risking damaging the engine or anything like that. And that's something that, you know, we have the energy industry here, we have the aviation industry here, you know, that could be a science fiction application for this. Science fiction has oftentimes turned into fact. Dick Tracy calling Joe Jitsu, calling Joe Jitsu. Go ahead, Tracy. I Remember the Dick Tracy cartoons? Off that two crooks. The 1983 movie War Games centered on a young man who hacked into the United States defense computer system and almost created World War III. Shall we play a game? Although that scenario was fictional, the government does use supercomputers for national defense. At TU, computer researchers are working under a grant from the United States Air Force. Professor of Computer Science Dr. John Hale is leading graduate students to determine the neurological basis of how we trust information we see online. 
The computer scientists are tracking the brains of research subjects to see how they respond to online stimuli. And if they make a poor trust decision, that obviously can adversely impact an organization or an agency or a mission. I mean, it could lead to loss of information, uh, some sort of a cyber attack. And so you really want to train uh, individuals optimally to make the best trust decisions that they can. Dr. Hale is considering using the supercomputer in their research efforts. Anytime we're confronted with a large volume of data, and we're certainly going to have that in, in the pursuit of our research, uh, effectively analyzing it so that we can get our analyses done in maybe minutes or hours as opposed to weeks, um, that obviously is a game changer for us in terms of what we can do with, with the research and, and moving it forward. Scientists at the Laureate Institute for Brain Research are trying to discover the causes and cures for disorders of mood, anxiety, eating, and memory. They use what is called an fMRI to study the brains of people suffering from those disorders. Dr. Brett McKinney says the sophisticated machine does more than show a static image of the brain. It lets researchers see how the brain is working. But when a subject's in it, in the machine, it's a big magnet. Um, they're able to measure um, changes in blood level in different parts of the brain. And that is a surrogate measure of uh, neurons firing in different parts of the brain. The computers at the Institute don't have the memory capacity to manipulate and experiment with large volumes of data. Dr. McKinney says the supercomputer is needed to advance brain science research. The first thing is it will make things possible that, that weren't possible before um, by just having this large memory architecture. Dr. McKinney hopes the supercomputer will eventually help researchers find cures for baffling disorders like schizophrenia and much more. It's a little bit like having a telescope that sees further into space than ever before and you just can't wait to see the pictures. This computer can do things that other computers can't do because of its speed and its power and uh, it, in the hands of smart researchers, it, the future is ours. The Tulsa Community Supercomputer is scheduled to be installed in October and be open for business by the first week of November.